right, Straight Fire number 16, dealing with sectors. And a sector is just a slice of pizza taken from a circular pizza. Um, let's actually take a look at question number one. Pa read the question and then unpause it. Unpause the video once you've read the question and tried the, maybe even tried the question ahead of time. So in question, unpausing it. Uh, now, so in this question, we want to know how far it is from there to there. They're telling us that it is already 2.4 meters from the center to the circular track. They want to know how far the cart traveled. And to answer these questions on this video, or on this worksheet, uh, I'm going to use the idea of part over whole. So we've done some cross multiplying in geometry so far. If you've been following these videos, um, we've also it's also something that you do often in middle school, maybe even elementary schools, working with cross multiplying and working with percents in particular. So uh, we're going to use the idea of the part over the whole and the part of the whole to figure out the answer to these questions. So my idea, my goal here is to show you how easy this can be. So in a circle, what's the whole total of a number of degrees in a circle? 360 degrees. And that would go on the bottom because that's a whole amount. What part do we have? We have 165 degrees. Now I need another part and another whole. Well, let me put an X in the picture. I'm looking for this. Is that part of the circle or the whole circle? Well, it's a rhetorical question. It's part of the circle. So since I'm doing part over whole, part over whole, I'll put the X there. Now what I do need on, on the bottom of this fraction is I do need the whole distance all the way around the circle. And that whole distance is called the circumference. And the circumference can be calculated using one formula, pi times d, or using another formula, 2 pi r. Well, I just use pi times d. So uh, pi is three point, about 3.14. And the diameter, well, the radius is 2.4. So the diameter would be 2.4 plus another 2.4. So 4.8. So that would be, in blue, that would be the entire distance all the way around that circle. Now, on my calculator, it comes out to be about 15 all the way, all the way around that circle. But I'm not going to write down 15 here. I'm going to write down pi times 4.8. Or you know what? It's even... It's even more polite to put the 4.8 in front. 4.8 times pi. This will give me an exact answer. And all i got to do is cross-multiply it. So 4.8 pi times 165. So 165 times 4.8 gives me 792 with a pi next to it. So I didn't even use the pi button yet on my calculator. And then x times 360 is 360x. And then one small step, dividing by 360, will give me the answer. So now I'm going to type it in to my calculator, 792 times pi, divided by 360. I'm not using 3.14, I'm actually using the pi button on my calculator or on my app to do this. So when I do that, I get an answer that's approximately 6.91150 and change. It does say to round my answer to the nearest tenth. So there's my tenth spot, so the answer is going to be 6.9. All right, on to the next question. So, similar situation, talking about the length of a minor arc. Once you read the question and then unpause the video. Now that you unpause the video, um, 
So they're running from A to S counter on a counterclockwise way. So that means they're traveling against the clock that way. Um, now this one's a little bit different. They do tell us that it's 247 feet from A to S. And they also tell us the radius of the circle. But what we're after is how many degrees are in the center here. So we'll still use the same exact formula, but we'll be looking for a different part. So we're following the idea of part over whole. And that's the easiest way to do these questions. So we are looking for this amount right here in red. Is that part of a circle or is that the whole circle? Okay, that is part of the circle. So we'll just put an X there. That's what we're looking for. So that's X. That's part of the whole part, which is worth 360. So I'm doing part over whole, part over whole. The 247 feet that they gave me here, that's part of the circle. So I'm doing part over whole, so that will be along on the top. And now I just need the total distance all the way around the circle. And that's something that they did not give me, but I do know the formula for circumference, which is pi times d. So just as before, pi times d would be pi times 300. Since, since it's 150 for the radius, all the way across would be the diameter of 300. And all I have to do is cross multiply and finish solving that. So when I cross multiply here, I get 300 pi times the x equals 247 times 300, or 360, which is 88,920. Divide both sides by 300 pi to get the x by itself, which is what my goal is. And I'm just going to type in exactly what I wrote. 88920 divided by 300. But you know what? When I come to think of it, when I type this into the calculator, I'm going to have to tell the calculator to divide by 300 and the pi. If I don't put it in parentheses as I type it in, the calculator will just divide by 300 and then it will multiply by pi. And my answer will certainly not look right. So let me type it in the right way. Then I'll, then I'll type it in the wrong way to tell you what the answer um, looks like if you do make that mistake. So as it turns out, it comes out to be about 94.35 degrees. It says rounded the nearest degree, so the answer would be 94 degrees. Now if you typed it in the wrong way, if you typed in 88920, and divided it by 300 pi, at least on the graph and calculator, it gives you 931 degrees for the answer. So we're after the angle that's in the inside, and there's no way that that angle is 931 degrees. So, so you know, I guess once again, when you're dividing by something like this, dividing by more than one thing, Put them in putting them in parentheses is a good idea. In fact, some teachers actually tell their students to put the top and the bottom both in parentheses. It's a little unnecessary, but it's a precaution for typing it in. Now there's um, now there's uh, one more thing that I added to these questions. It says in the two pictures above, find the area of the sectors formed in the minor arcs. So now we'll do one more round of practice, and. It, Okay, you may be thinking, oh my gosh, what, what are we going to do now? We're talking about the area all of a sudden. Well, it's exactly the same work, except instead of using the circumference formula, we're going to be using the area formula. Let me show you how. So going back to quite the first question, if we're, act, if we're after the space that's here, and we're not after the distance for that arc length, if we're after how much space this is, 
we'd be using the same sort of ideas as part over whole, except there'll be one small change. Instead of it being 165 out of 360 and x over pi times 4.8, X is the area here, the area of the sector that's part of the entire area of the entire circle. So that part right there is part of the total amount of circle space there is. And how do you find out the total amount of space in a circle? Well, you use pi r squared to do that. So it'd be, instead of pi times 4.8, it'd be pi times the radius squared. And all, all you'd have to do to finish this question is cross multiply to finish it. So you get 360 times x, and then you'd have to type in 2.4 squared times 165, which is 950.4 times the pi. Not typing in the pi until the very end. I'm going to divide both sides by 360. Now I'm going to type in the pi. So 950.4 pi divided by 360 ends up giving me about 8.293. My directions at the bottom of the page said to round to the nearest tenth. So the amount of space in that sector is about 8.3. Let's try that last one, doing the same sort of same sort of thing. Um, let's see. Well, just figuring out how much space is in the sector it might be a little bit easier than the last one, but we can use that part over the whole, part over the whole idea to get it as well. So let's actually see. Since we know some facts here about the picture, let's take a look at how we're going to figure out how much space is in that sector. So now I'm after the amount of space that's inside. So I'm not after the angle, I'm after the amount of space that's inside. If I follow that part over the total idea, or the part over the whole total idea, 94 degrees is the center, central angle. It was 94 degrees out of 360 degrees. That's my part over my whole. And we're going to do that again. I'm looking for a part of the entire area. The entire area is going to be pi r squared. So it be pi times 150 squared. All right, so what it comes down to is just doing some cross multiplying and being careful with the calculator. You get 360x when you multiply those together. Multiplying all that together gives you um, 94 times 150 squared. Well, it's going to be quite a lot. 21150000. Zero, zero, zero. With a pi at the end. That's why I'm leaving the pi in to the very end, so I don't have to write out an even longer number. I'm just going to type in all of this divided by 360. So now typing it in with the pi, 21151100, pi divided by 360, ends up giving me that the area to the nearest tenth 
is 18,456.9. Now, maybe the last thing is to find out, um, is the answer, does the answer make sense? Well, one way to get a good view of it is to f actually figure out what is the total area of that circle and actually get that down as an actual decimal. The area of the entire circle is pi r squared, which if I type that into a calculator just the way I see it, it gives me that the total area is 70,685.8. So does it make sense in the picture that the area of just this slice would be about 18,000 while the entire thing is worth 70,000 or 71,000. Well, um, taking a look at this, it's about a quarter of a circle. It's 94 degrees of a circle. So if I take this number and divide it by 4, I get 17,671. So this is slightly bigger than a quarter circle, so the answer does, does make sense. All right, so um, I guess this was a little bit easier than the last um, installment of Straight Fire Math. You have a fantastic day.